What does it mean to see the future? What does it mean to be omniscient? What does it mean to be omnipresent? All different questions that come up when we think about the Emperor of Mankind, and outside of a few excerpts, namely The Master of Mankind, and a couple of other Primarch books where Conrad Kurz or Sanguinius discuss foresight, we don't have a true explanation. We have him trying to explain the concept to one of his custodians, but we don't know how the Emperor would explain this to a normal person, since a custodian is leagues above even a space marine, and those are leagues above the normal person. Now I know there's going to be a couple comments down below talking about how the Emperor likes to lie to people and tell them just what they need to know, but it's very important to remember that each one of the 10,000, or the custodians, were meant to not only be warriors, but poets and advisor to essentially a god. And that, I believe, is the perfect place to start, because if you are an all-seeing, all-knowing god, why would you need bodyguards? Why would you need advisors? You would be able to simply not put yourself in a position, or not allow the situation to happen in which you are in danger. But given the fact that he does have bodyguards, we can essentially deduct one of two things. Either chaos makes foresight, or omniscience, or omnipresence, impossible, which, given it's literally called chaos, it wouldn't be too surprising if it causes chaos to the timeline, or timelines. Or, alternatively, multiverse theory, and the Emperor doesn't really know which universe he's in at any given time. I'll give clearer examples as we go further into the video, but for right now I just want to get the information out of the way so I can focus on just making good analogies later down the line. For now, we're going to take a look at both how Magnus the Red, Sanguinius, and Conrad Kurz each separately kind of discuss the foresight of their father. So both Kurz and Sanguinius have very, very limited foresight as compared to Big E or someone like Eldrad Uthwe. I want to start off with Conrad Kurz because a lot of people say that he saw the worst possible outcome, and I don't think that's the case at all. I want to put out the argument that Conrad Kurz was the deterministic or nihilistic future. So we know that when the Emperor is talking with Ron Dimion, he mentions how there's trillions of decisions that can make trillions of possible outcomes. With Conrad Kurz, he saw a future in which he made no choices. He essentially gave up his free will because he thought that destiny or fate was sealed. He didn't believe in free will. On the complete opposite side of the coin, you have Sanguinius, who I would say saw the indeterminate future, if that makes sense. Whereas Kurz saw what would happen if he made no choices, Sanguinius saw what would happen if he made what he believed were the best choices, or if he followed essentially his viewpoint. While Kurz is probably the closest thing to the dictionary definition of a nihilist or a pessimist, Sanguinius is probably the closest we're going to get to the dictionary definition of an optimist or a stoic. I think the most ironic part of this entire thing is that Sanguinius and Conrad Kurz both both had the exact same foresight, it just doesn't seem that way. Where Conrad decided he wasn't going to make decisions, which is a decision, mind you, Sanguinius thought that by him making decisions, he was changing the future, but in reality, both of their decisions only led to their predetermined outcome. Real quick, I want to go over Eldrad Uthwe, because despite being you know, an Eldar, a filthy Xeno, we know for a fact that he's the strongest Psyker in the galaxy, probably the entire universe, maybe even a god, but we know for a fact that this guy accurately predicts the future. So he probably only sees one timeline, as opposed to the Master of Mankind, who sees a panoply of timelines. There's also the possibility that Eldrad just understands living beings better, or maybe there's some warp chicanery going on, but Eldrad, for some reason, is able to predict all of the variables that the Emperor is not. Granted, Eldrad, again, is said to be the strongest Psyker in the entirety of 40k, but, uh, you know, depends on the writer. So, four and a half minutes in, and we finally get to how the Emperor actually sees time. I want to break this down into a couple of different examples. One of them is going to be the Onions example, which I promise it'll make sense when I actually get there. Then we have the Grid example, and I'll come up with the third one when we get there. So, onions have layers. Oh, hello there! I'm sure this is a big surprise to a lot of you, but it's very important for this analogy. For this analogy, envision a farmer looking at his harvest. Before him is bushels and bushels of onions. 
Each one of these onions represents a decision or a branching timeline. Let's take, for example, the Horus Heresy. So the bushel directly to his left is going to be all of the different variations of the Horus Heresy, or the major variations of the Horus Heresy. Now, let's say the Emperor picks up one of those onions from that bushel, or whatever the hell they're called. This onion, for example, let's just say is Mortarian staying loyalist. While the macro onion, or the entire onion, is different variations of Mortarian being loyalist, as you go down to each individual layer, they're going to be different. There's going to be specific variations from layer to layer. Just in that one onion, from that one crate, from that one harvest, we have hundreds, if not thousands, of different minor outcomes or minor variations in the outcome. And each and every variation is a product of the greater environment, which is the field. Keep in mind that Big E really can't control 99% of the galaxy, or 99% of the happenings in the galaxy or even the wider universe for that factor. Put that into the scale of the farmer and he can't control if it's going to be a rainy season, a dry season, if there's going to be parasites from a different field, parasites from a different landmass, parasites from a different country. It, the list just goes on and on and on. There are so many different variables that he can't control and he is just sitting there trying to ensure that the nitrogen levels stay balanced, that they're not being overfed, that they're getting the right amount of water. He is essentially balancing trillions of different variables trying to get the best possible outcome or onions in this situation. The Emperor is just forced into a corner or a situation where he is just doing what he knows best or what he believes is best because all he can do is try and produce onions. He doesn't have the option of swapping to a different vegetable because he already has planted so many seeds so far back in time that he has to do everything possible to ensure that those seeds blossom, given whatever circumstance there is, whether that's blocking rain, creating artificial rain, you know, increasing or decreasing fertilizer for this example. It, he is just trying to balance things. Now, moving over to a more scientific or, I guess, visual explanation as opposed to just vegetables, I want to go over the graph explanation. So, for simplicity's sake, just envision a basic grid with an x, y axis. We'll add the z axis later, but for right now, it's just x and y. Flatten the God Emperor down to essentially just a two-dimensional being and lay him anywhere on this graph. Anywhere you want, really, it doesn't matter, as long as he is taking up multiple squares. Now, each and every square that touches the Emperor is a potential outcome of his actions or his influence. Because he's touching so many potential thousands, millions, billions, even trillions by his words of different timelines, he has to essentially average it. So more than likely, during the whole Primarch project and all of the different visions that he saw, the Primarchs that he treated poorly, like Mortarian, Probably more than 50% of the time they did rebel, so it was safer to go with the more consistent timeline. Because the Emperor doesn't know precisely all the different variables, thus he can't calculate the exact outcome, he can run a bunch of essentially rough numbers and go with the average and the worst case scenario, and plan for both of those. Now, let's take a step back and return to the graph. Now is where the graph, or the potential futures, is about to exponentially grow. If we add the z dimension to the grid, then we get a closer example of how the Emperor sees time, because we go from hundreds of boxes that his body interacts with to thousands, but even then, we're still not done. Because the Emperor also sees through time, meaning that as well as having an x y and z axis there would be another axis let's just say theta so the theta axis adds another exponential layer of complexity once we're at this layer of complexity what he says to ra and Dimian starts to make sense trillions of potential outcomes seems pretty accurate we went from hundreds or thousands of outcomes to millions or billions just by adding two more axes. And that's not even factoring in if the Emperor even sees higher dimensions. Maybe he interacts with a fifth or a sixth dimension, or maybe for him, time isn't the fourth temporal dimension. Maybe it's like the fifth or the sixth, and he's got another dimension that he can view through. I'm not sure, but keep in mind that every single other angle adds to the complexity. Now, I want to end this off with a quote from the Emperor. I know I said that I'd give a third example, but I really think that his exact wording when he's speaking to Ra and Dimian and Master of Mankind is probably the closest in-setting explanation we can possibly get. 
without having it come from, say, Eldred, or maybe even a Chaos God themselves. I can see the coast, Ra. I know what awaits me there. But, I cannot see all the infinite vicissitudes between here and there. At last, he lowered his hand. That is foresight, Ra. To know a trillion possible futures and to be left to guess at the infinite ways of arriving at each one. To map out even one possible eventuality, taking into account every decision that every living being will make that will impact upon the others around it would take all of the lifetimes I have already lived. The only way to know anything for certain is to reach the other side.